Hello? Hello? Is anyone here? Melissa? Is that you in there? I told you, Dolan, all of your friends are gone. Likely very far away. It'll probably take us a very long time to track them down. <gasps> Nixium's sword! He wouldn't just leave this lying around. He loves this blade more than anything. I'm taking it back to him. You, uh... You need a hand? <sighs> oh, look! Nixium's butter knife! I'm, I'm sure he'll be just as pleased to get this back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Total cop out. How do maggots somehow get in the fridge? Chances are the maggot eggs were already in your food when you put it in the fridge. Those vegetables you buy are not sterile. They've been outside and in the ground. Now, since they're so small, it probably won't do you much harm to consume them, but it's still a good idea to not leave perishables for too long. Either that or the maggots managed to get in there through a hole in the fridge. Perhaps even the fridge's own drain pipe. Be sure to check. Yeah, nah. You know how birds will collect sticks to build a nest? Likewise, a giant senior maggot the size of a full-grown male human will find and open your fridge door to <laughs> deposit its young upon all the cold, nourishing food you keep in there. Oh my god. You are disgusting. I want one. Oh, what in the... Why aren't deer domesticated like cows? A few reasons. Firstly, supply and demand. Their meat isn't in as high of a demand as, say, pork or beef. Secondly, they're more expensive and difficult to manage. They run fast, jump around, and when trying to herd them, they tend to disperse. You would also have to maintain much higher and expensive fencing to keep them enclosed. Deers are just low-budget horses, thin muscle mass, you can't ride them without breaking their spines, and they sure as hell don't produce quality milk. I know that for a fact. If we're up to me, I would Thanos snap them out of existence. Right, and how often do you go out to drink the milk of woodland creatures? Listen, listen, when times are tough, <laughs> the cost of living, look, inflation, it, it is rampant. I, you know, I'll drink whatever I want. Why can't we remember the moment we fall asleep? Simply put, your awareness has been put to sleep. Falling asleep is a gradual process as brainwave activity shifts between several stages until you are fully in the land of Nod. So it's quite difficult to remember the exact moment you were no longer awake. A quick side note, the process can be aided along by thinking about things with little emotional content like counting sheep. Because your brain is too busy remembering all those other wonderful memories that you have, like that homework you forgot to hand in 15 years ago, or that dumb joke you made that nobody laughed at. Or that horrible thing you did that gnaws at the back of your mind and fills you with overwhelming guilt. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Uh, hey, is that Nixium's soup spoon over there? Huh? Where? Oh, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. <sighs> Why does tapping the top of a can of drink make it less fizzy? Unfortunately, with a little testing, tapping a can of pop to make it less fizzy is a bit of a myth. The premise is that by tapping the top of a drink, you can dislodge the bubbles clinging to the sides. This causes the bubbles to float to the top where once the can is open, they pop without disturbing as much of the liquid within. However, in actuality, waiting to open the can by tapping is the actual cause of fizz reduction, as it lets the bubbles settle, whereas the tapping does very little on its own. A dark secret. Forbidden magic. Tapping a can is clearly an exploitation of buggy life physics. If you continue to abuse this before the next real life hotfix, you'll be banned from life and unplugged from the matrix. Or worse yet, if you keep doing it, you will be punished. Don't do it. Don't even talk about it. 
Mr. D, what are you doing? I can't tell you. It's a secret. Why is it healthy to strain the heart with exercise, but not with stress? Both exercise and stress can put a strain on the heart. The difference between the two is that exercise will cause your body to adapt, like blood vessels becoming better at delivering oxygen to your muscles, for example. Stress, like exercise, puts a strain on the heart, but with little or no physical adaptation. This could even damage the blood vessels, which may lead to severe heart or artery problems. <laughs> Everyone knows the real trick for good health is to combine exercise and stress. A treadmill that alternates between rubber and spikes as it moves. Also, you're wearing a bomb vest that will detonate if you drop below a certain speed. I have your family and I'm not afraid to do what I must. Gets the blood pumping, doesn't it? Don't hurt my giant maggot friend! Really? That's my hostage? That disgusting maggot from earlier? Her name is Maggie! What? <laughs> what if every ocean suddenly disappeared? Besides all of the aquatic life that would suddenly be unable to exist, without our planet's largest bodies of water, rain would become extremely rare. Without a sustainable level of rainfall, most plant life would die as the planet transforms into a desert. The temperatures would continue to rise and oxygen becomes more and more thin until the surface of the planet becomes completely uninhabitable. It would be pleasant for no one. This is a very real threat that one person alone can cause. If you leave your tap running long enough, it will drain 90% of the world's oceans. Why else do you think people tell you to turn them off when you're done? You thought it was just some idle warning? Tell that to the billions of people who can't swim or drive boats now. Tell that to the earth as it shrivels up like a prune and everyone dies. Oh, if only there were multiple ways we could prevent that from happening. Oh, please, that would cost trillions of dollars. It's easier to just have everyone take personal responsibility. At least I think so. Why does your nose clog when you have a cold, no matter how many times you blow it? When you have a cold and your nose feels congested, it's not actually the mucus that causes the clog sensation. The blood vessels in the tissues of your inner nose are inflamed, which causes the tissue to swell. Most decongestants can reduce the swelling, but it's more than likely you'll still be blowing snot out of your nose until the illness passes. Actually, that's your brain trying to escape. It's very important you try and keep it inside your skull. I've learned if it does escape, that usually means you're dead or a lawyer. Use a Q-tip and shove it back in, or better yet, a butter knife. What the? Huh, weird. <gasps> Darling, I think this knife might lead us to Nixium. Huh, really? Yeah. Nixium always said his weapons were bound to him. Maybe it's trying to get back to his side. <laughs> yeah, or the kitchen. Mr. D, did you forget to drink your brain juice again? Come on, let's go answer a few more questions. We can look for your friend later. Trust me, darling. I'm onto something here. Let's go.